913 WVKR Independent Radio, Poughkeepsie, New York, Lindsay Webster. You're tuned into Local Motion with Rita Ryan here, 913 WVKR. So thrilled to be having today's guest on the show with me. Let me tell you a little bit about who my guest today is. Jazz, R&B, and pop singer Lindsay Webster's first single, Fool Me Once, reached number one on the Smooth Jazz Chart. 
at Billboard magazine in 2016, making her the first vocalist since Sade's 2010 Soldier of Love to have a number one vocally driven song in the primarily instrumental format. Since then, Lindsay has scored six top five hits. Lindsay's from Woodstock, New York, and is our Hudson Valley neighbor. She'll be performing on Sunday, Valentine's Day, along with Will Bryant at Pearl Moon in Woodstock, New York. Welcome back to Local Motion, Lindsay Webster. Hi, Vita. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, it's so nice to have you back on. Lots has happened to you since you you and Keith were on the show last time. I know. I mean, when, what year was that even? I, you know, I got to say it's got to be five years. I think you guys were one of my first guests when I started the show here at yes. Vassar. Yes. Yeah, so it's been a really long time. So let's delve in a little bit um, with your history. Yes, you're happy to be a Hudson Valley native here. Born and raised in Woodstock, yeah? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. That's cool. That's cool. Um, when, what about music as a kid when you were little? What Were you listening to music? Were your parents listening and ex exposing you to certain types of music? Yeah, um, well, both of my parents are huge fans of music in general. My mom was a singer, um, and so, you know, she would always hear me singing, like, from my, from my bedroom, be like, we're almost singing, because she, like, she was actually trained, um, in opera, even though she, but her heart was, like, you know, she wanted to sing backgrounds for, like, rock and roll groups, and, you know, be at Woodstock singing backgrounds and stuff like that, but she didn't get to do that. And my dad, he pretty much like plays, you know, anything that he picks up. He's very musical, so um, music was always in my family. My my brother is ten years older than I am, and he's a musician. So I there was always the band practicing in my garage. Nice. So nice. it was always like, normal, you mm -hmm. know, just to even have the opportunity to even think that I could do music if I wanted to because my parents were really cool, you know? Right, right. They were supportive of you. I also know that you started playing cello. How old were you when you did that? Um, I was in the third grade oh. when I started Oh, so cute. They kids oh. always look so little when they're next to a cello or a bass at that age. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And then you kept that up, right? The cello for a while. Yeah, for most years. Um, Really, the, the, the thing that made me end up steering more away from cello was just that I moved from a school district that provided me with cello and lessons and orchestra um, to one that didn't. Yep. And um, so, you know, if there's not a music budget, uh, it's, which is just a really sad thing. Um, you know, there's no, they don't have instruments, they didn't have orchestra when I moved into this little town. That I, it was just kind of a sad thing, but I really started singing a lot more at that point. You know? Yeah. And what were you uh, listening to? Oh, what was I listening to? Like Mariah Carey nonstop because I was a big dork. <laughs> <laughs> any any singer really that had like a big voice, you know, that, that had a big range, I was always gravitated towards those singers like Shaka, um, Aretha, Whitney, Mariah, those big voices, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you take voice lessons? I never took any voice lessons. Wow, no. wow. And you went to LaGuardia High School, right, in New York? Yeah, for, for like two semesters, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, a lot of great people are coming out of that high school, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, Jennifer Aniston graduated from there um, because there's acting now, too, you know, because it was back in the 80s, the fame school was like up on, I don't know, 90-something street, and it was just music, and then they brought the two schools together, and so that's the one that I attended. Right, 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 right. And then singing started in earnest. Like, how did you start? You started with open mics, or how did you? How did you even start with it all? Well, I always loved singing, um, but because we had like a lack of cellists, all of my teachers kind of were like, "Yeah, yeah, singing and everything, but keep up with that cello," because there just weren't that many cellists around. Um, so I had been singing ever since I can remember. But when I really first started going out. And and getting a taste of, like, getting a microphone. It was, like, karaoke. Um, and then I didn't really go to any open mic, like, like guitar or piano or anything. So, and I didn't really know anyone. Uh, so I would just, like, you know, sing in the studio with my friends. Like, I had, like, some rappers that, like, I, I sung little hooks on their stuff. Um, I just literally sung 
wherever and whenever I could. Nice, nice. And then all of a sudden, what did you, what made you say, like, I want to do this, like, for my profession. This is what I want to do. I'm going to give it a shot. What was the point when, when that happened for you? Well, the psychiatrist is trying to figure that out now. So. <laughs> it's still out, out to uh, figure that one out. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I just, I don't know, I always dreamed of being on a stage when I was a little girl. Um, and performing, because, because, you know, I was from an early age, like, on a stage at some point, just for school, you know, because Woodstock Elementary, Woodstock's super progressive and, like, had a great music program, so... It was just always an option, and I, it never seemed like a dream, because then, you know, you go out, and there's, like, Donald Fagan and David Sanchez and Jack Net walking around and, and John Sebastian and Woodstock, you know, so it's like, oh, like, I'm living in this town with all these big stars, like, I don't know, it just, it, it just seems so feasible to me, and I just really love the singing, I love making music. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was a combination of of events and things, you know? Right, right. Just kind of just all connected the dots, and, and you came out with a pretty remarkable first album. Tell me about your first time in a recording studio. Oh, wow. Well, it was over in Ryan Beck at Clubhouse, you know, um, Paul Antonell's studio there. And uh, I had no idea, really, what was going on the entire time between, you know, engineers running around and miking things and cables. I know so much more now. I... I was just kind of like watching it all happen in awe, not really understanding a lot of what was going on, I don't think. You know, I was kind of just like along for the ride. I was, what, 20, uh, it was 2012 when we recorded that, so however old that made me, 21 or two. Right. Um, I'm not really a numbers person. I was born in 88. Oh my God, I'm older than that at that time, but whatever. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. So, So, um. So yeah, so it was it was an amazing experience. I, I felt like a professional mm-hmm. for the first, you know. Right, right. And you released that um, independently too, that album, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then that's the album. Is that the number one? Fool me once, right? Is that when that happened? Yeah. Ha- yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so- but so what's crazy is it didn't happen for four years later. Yeah, but, you know, some people it never happens to, so. Oh, I, no, I, I was just happy that, like, because nowadays you can't really release an old song and it goes, you know what I mean? I don't really know how it happened, honestly. When I, when, when I found out that we were on Billboard, I was just, I was like, wait, like, the Billboard? Like, or, I was like, is there a mistake? Is everyone sure? <laughs> right, right, right. Is, is this really the case? Is this what's going on? Wow. <laughs> And of course, we have to mention your musical partner, uh, Keith. Um, You know, I mean, you guys um, have been a musical team for quite some time, and um, he's quite a talented piano player as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we write all our music together. He produces um, all the albums. No, no, like I was mentioning earlier, I didn't have a lot of experience then, but now I've taken much more of a seat in like the production aspect of things. Um, you know, but Keith really has taught me basically everything I know in terms of like the studio and recording, and I've gotten all all my experience, you know, working with him, writing with him. So yeah, Keith is. I always joke and say that Keith is like ninety five percent of like quote unquote Lindsay Webster. <laughs> you know, because he writes the music, and to me, the music is the most important part, and that inspires my melody. Right. You know? Right. Right. Now you write the lyrics, and he writes the words. Is that? I mean, the music. Is that how that works? Yeah. What typically will happen is like Keith will come up with like an idea on piano or whatever on Rhodes or you know, and he'll send me a an idea, like, just piano, and if it inspires me, like, I'll write to it, you know, and I'll I'll write the words and the melody, so it's, like, sometimes I'll grab a melody that he, like, did on the piano, but I think most times I'm coming up with the melody, he writes the basic chord progression, and then it inspires me or doesn't, you know, whatever, there are so many songs that he's sent, he's probably sent me, like, over the course of these years, like, 300 song ideas, you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, yeah, that's a lot. And it seems to work for you guys. This, like, collaboration of music is, um, it's really, really sweet. And the hits that you keep coming out with, your latest release just came out, what, last year? 
Um, yes, yes, that's right. 2020. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Were you out touring? I know you, I'm guessing you would have toured the rest of the year, right? If COVID no, we, didn't happen. Um, 2020 was going to be our busiest year yet. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the universe had other plans for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly did. That's for sure. And um, so now once this is behind us, which it will be at some point, um, yeah. I'm guessing you're going to... Are, are you finding yourself more creative now, like as far as writing music? Or are you kind of like, oh, I'm in, like stuck? Or everybody's different with it during this time, it seems like. Yeah. Um, you know, for the first whole few months there, I was like processing really what was happening. Because, you know, like, we thought we were going to be, like, locked down for, like, four or six weeks, and, like, then little things were canceling here and there, and then, you know, once we really got a grasp on things, like, it, it um, there were good days and bad days, but, you know, I was re it really, it's like, all of a sudden have a whole new life, and I wasn't really anticipating that, no one was, you know, some people, though, they kept working, some well, you know, they had to. If you're working in a hospital, you didn't have an option, or you're working in, you know, one of these essential positions. But um, to all of a sudden, you know, be grounded in my hometown and not really able to see a whole lot of people, um, it really had me just sitting with myself mm -hmm. and facing things and, like, who am I if I'm not, quote unquote, Lindsay Webster? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because that's really important to me. Like, there are a lot of people who, I don't know, maybe don't realize how important, like, your self-care is. Like, it's really important to me. And so um, having to kind of just sit and be like, well, if, if, I'm not, if, if I'm not what I thought I was, you know, then, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. It yeah. Like, it, it forces you to figure out what else you could do in life and then it's kind of scary when you're like oh what am, what am I good at what can I do what, what can I spend my time doing how am I gonna am I gonna be lazy am I gonna work out am I gonna be outside or me you know it, yeah, it's yeah. you have to come up with like a whole new identity because all of a sudden it's like wow I can't go do what I've always been doing and used to doing and all of that yeah. it's like the brakes were pushed on really hard and and everybody just you know had to stop so and and still for the arts right now it, it's 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 hard to see so many people that are struggling venues um musicians artists look at broadway broadway is still dark unbelievable you know, I know. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's everybody I talk to is a little. I always like to hear people's perspectives because everyone's got a different s story. Because some people's like, oh my god, I'm so creative. I have 20 new songs. I'm ready to record this new album, and others are not. You know, and others are just well, like. Mm. It's funny. But some of the experience that I've the experiences that I've had these last few months inspire being in my hometown. Inspired what I consider some of my best writing. Oh, nice. I broke through the whole thing, and Keith and I started writing, and, like, I'm really excited about our new material. You know, our next album won't probably come out until, you know, the end of this year. Mm -hmm. well, depending on when we can fly to L.A. and record, and like that. But, um, but, yeah, I'm really excited about it. So after all the crazy, that's, that's kind of what I was getting at before, I guess, was that, like, at first, I was devastated and was figuring out, like, who I am and what's important to me. Went through a breakup my ex-fiance. So I did the quarantine alone. I was like, it was just me. And then I got a dog because I was like, well, you can't do it totally alone. So <laughs> Always the best kind. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a time. So now when you record, you're you're signed with a record company and all of that they just fly you to la and how does that all work that's got to be a whole different different way of doing things oh yeah it's, it's great um well we're given a budget and then we can like spend it how we want you know what i mean uh-huh yeah uh, so um so yeah so we were able to make it happen with a few favors uh you know we got uh, like some amazing players out in la and i'm sure that you've probably heard of some of them, if not all of them. Um, Nathan East was on bass, and, you know, he's got, I think he's, like, the most recorded bass player in musical history. Wow, yeah, wow. And I'm, like, 
sitting next to him, and I was like singing through the fire because uh, through the fire is like always stuck in my head for some reason by Shaka, um, yeah, Shaka Khan. And um, he was like, "Oh man," he's like, "I remember doing that session." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "What? What session?" He's like, he's like, "Oh yeah, you know Shaka." He's like, "He's like that's me playing bass." I was like, "I can't." I was like, "I gotta go." Right, right. It's like <laughs> I can't. I can't even talk to you. What? <laughs> yeah. That's not exactly what I said. I said I can't even talk to you anymore. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> drums and Louis Conte was on percussion. Wow. And they're amazing. Just just astounding musicians. You know, uh, uh, Vinny Caliuta was on all Frank Zappa stuff. Um, and it just happened like it's not like we have some incre- incredible amazing budget or anything because, you know, it is, we're still on a smaller independent label, you right. know? Uh-huh. Um, but uh, it was just like stars lining to, to get this particular set up of amazing musicians together in the studio. That's awesome. How many albums have you released now, Lindsay? Five. Five. Five yeah. albums. Five albums. Wow, wow, wow. And then six top five hits on the Billboard. Yep. Wow. So, I mean, it's like, when people are say that out loud, I'm always just like, it's, it's so surreal. <laughs> How do you find out when your album hits uh, on the charts? You just track it, or is it? Do they let you know before it goes public? How did How did you find out? Uh, well, every Monday we find out, and um, that's when the re- the reports come in from radio stations across the country. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, uh, our, my manager will write me an email and be like, "Hey, here, you give me all the time so I can see how everyone else is doing on on their two, and like." what radio stations added it, how many times it plays you, because that's how the billboard, it's how the numbers work, like how many, how, what your numbers are at radio, right, you know? Right, 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 awesome. But the thing is, it's tricky, because we also got lucky, in a way, with Fool Me Once, and Where Do You Want to Go, both making it to number one on the billboard chart, because, um, at, well, like you mentioned earlier, smooth jazz is a like primarily instrumental genre. Yeah. Um, so the fact that our vocal song even broke into the genre was great. We had a lot of wonderful program directors who were willing to put vocal songs on these like smooth jazz stations, you know, contemporary jazz, whatever you want to call it. Smooth jazz is such has such a stigma, but you know. Um, so anyway, um, um, I lost my train of thought, and yeah. that's it. Then. No, we we're talking about the charts and Billboard. No, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, so, wow, that's really cool. So, are you going to tour as soon as you're able to, or are you going to record first? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, probably, if someone's like, I mean, we do actually have some things booked. I'm, you know, suspecting they're going to get canceled. They're just coming up, like, gigs are starting for us in April. Um, you know, waiting to see what goes on with vaccines and numbers and stuff like that. Because I really, you know, I don't want to go traveling and, and just, it's just such, such a risk, you know? Yeah, it is. It is. I, yeah. It's just not worth it yet, I don't think. Yeah, I, I say without, I, I like, I don't feel comfortable being on a plane without a vaccine, vaccine you know, and right. you still have to mask and all of that for others, but as right. far as me traveling, I, that's, what, that's what I say for myself, you know, I just yeah, want to yeah. be vaccinated, and then I'll still be cool around everybody, but at least, you know, that's one less way of doing it, so, yeah, yeah. so I, I, I see people are still in recording studios, so. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So at least there you can distance. You're not, you know, in so many crowds and all of that. But you still have to tour to promote the last release that you released last year. Yeah, I think that ship has sailed. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just start fresh and be like, okay, yeah. let's get yeah, this I'm thing done. going. I'm done with that album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm moving on. Yeah. Yeah, and that's cool. That's cool, you know, and work on the next one, and off you go. Now, you guys sent me some great um, music, which, of course, I said I'm, I'm going to play before and after we talk. So tell me about some of these tracks, um, Running Around. Tell me about that one. Um, running Around is, like, our obligatory up-tempo song for each album, because Keith and I tend to just love to write slow ballads. So, like, we're, like, just, like, Vibey song, so we're like, all right, we have to write a relatively up tempo song. So that's how Running Around came to be. Um, and you know, Running Around is just like the hook came right to me. The how do you, da, 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 you know, it just it came right to me. People are always like, who'd you 
write that about? You know, because <laughs> like everyone knows that like Keith and I, you know, uh, just before the year before that album came out, we split up because we were married. Mm-hmm. Um, and so everyone was like, "Ooh, did you write that about Keith?" I'm like, "No, no, no, Keith. Never. He's a very faithful, wonderful person. No, no, no. It was more about just like." what I would say or do if somebody had cheated on me, you know? Right, yeah. Um, so, so, I mean, and please, I've, I've experienced that in earlier relationships, so I have inspiration to draw from. Right. But, um, yeah, running around, was just, it's just a fun, it's like a spunky, kind of sassy, like, sarcastic kind of diss track in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool. And what about Only You? Oh, Only You is like, uh, a contender for my favorite on um, the album. Um, you know, when Keith sent me that music, it's just such a dreamy feel. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't know, it just it just reminded me of, like, singing about the stars and love and stuff. So, oh. so yeah, that's how that one kind of oh, came to me. Nice. And then Close to You? Oh, yeah, Close to You. Um, Close to You is, like, another fun little poppy kind of song. Um, that's the first song that I wrote for um, um, the album A Woman Like Me, the very first one. Wow, nice, nice. And then, of course, I'll play Feels Like Forever. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was the first single from, from the album. Yeah. And you've got some great videos out, too. Oh, thanks. Yeah, 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 lots of fun. I do want to direct people to lindsaywebstermusic.com, and of course, you're all over social media as well, and YouTube, but there's some really cool videos. The last one that you just uploaded, that was, I mean, I could tell it's like definitely Woodstock area, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we did that video at the Thorn Preserve, mm-hmm. which is just off of John Joy Road, and it's beautiful. Um, and then we did the other part of with the stream and stuff at the Como property. Nice, nice, yeah, 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 it's so great, so great, and you make it look so easy on these videos, but that can't be easy to do. It's really not easy. No, I wouldn't think it would be. I mean, being on stage and being live, is that's natural for you, but on a video, I would imagine it's a little harder. No, it's um, it's definitely a challenge for me, because it's like I'm acting in a way, Yeah, you know, sure. you, have to, like, you have to try not to like itch yourself or like like you have to like be i don't know it's fun i i enjoy it you know right Um, so i get to kind of like have an alter ego and be like you know i I always feel that way and another thing about like being back in my hometown is like i grew up a small town girl i grew up in woodstock um before i met keith i was going to school to maybe do like medical research and even though i always had this passion for music you know and um so um yeah, and it's just like I'm looking now and realizing, like, oh, geez, I enjoy like being a hometown girl, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and like, um, I don't know, I, I lost my train of thought again because I like I, this conversation has really got me thinking about so many different things and yeah, <laughs> how yeah. it relates to my music. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And just saying how like being like having to like put on a persona, you know, to be Lindsay Webster. It's like because really down down beneath it i'm just like a hometown little small town girl it's yeah, funny. yeah yeah it's uh yeah but you've come a long way that's for sure and uh, oh yeah now you're touring all over europe when you can of course all over the u.s you're part of many yeah. jazz festivals and yeah. it's it's really nice to see local people just succeed if whatever you want to call success right but that's yeah. definitely really yeah. cool to watch people become world travelers and just like you know you remember when you were just you know playing the little local gigs here and those are great too oh, yeah. we, we've got some great places here in the hudson valley um, oh, yeah. for sure yeah. for sure um but it, it's really nice and i'm so happy for you and um it's it, it'll be nice to continue to watch your travels and your success once this is all over because if this is only a pause and it will come back it really will. okay and it's gonna be better than ever absolutely people are gonna be jamming to get out to see music oh, yeah. and, you know to see the arts and all of that and i was thinking this morning i'm so depressed i, I miss new york city i just miss going to the city it's been a year since i've been down there and i just you know but when we all 
are able to come back, we will, and we will come back stronger for sure. Now, speaking uh, of playing, you are playing a little hometown show on Valentine's Day. Tell me about it. Yeah, I'm really excited, um, you know, because it's going to be, I'm working, um, you know, like I said, I'm kind of have like a pseudo life in the meantime, so I've, I've been working at the Pearl Moon doing um, serving and hostessing, and we were just hanging out after work, so like, great friends of mine, they're like family, the, the owners, Betsy and Scott, and Megan's the general manager, and Mike's the cook, so we were like just, you know, we've got our little like host work hang, and they were like, geez, like it would be so cool to like, if we could do some music, and I was like, well, aren't you allowed to, technically, like incidental music? Sure. They're like, yeah, but who? And I was like, I know someone. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to somebody. <laughs> and they were like, you would want to do that? I was like, please, I desperately want to do that <laughs> so um so yeah so it's gonna be awesome we have two seatings one at five o'clock and one at seven o'clock and um myself and will Bryan will be doing the show you know keith would normally play with me but he um he's gone off to like saint john or something so Ooh, <laughs> lucky him Oh, yeah. yeah. We don't like him right now. No, no, talking. no. Especially with all the snow we're having. It's like, yeah. I know. I just, I'm, I'm shoveling my walk this morning, and I'm like, Keith. <laughs> he's got sand between his toes you know it's like yeah yeah, yeah 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 no but it's great i'm happy he deserves it and needs it and all that um so yeah so will and will and i will be playing together and it's just gonna be like a mellow beautifully socially distanced dinner um and so i hope that people you know don't aren't still too hesitant to come out i know that we already sold out um most of the seven o'clock show so there's like some i think there's a 715 that's some 715 slots so they're like staggering it just so we don't have a whole bunch of people like waiting at the door right you know what i mean right so i when i when i promote this music that's incidentally happening i always tell people make reservations don't just plan on showing up and you know 100 people out the door because you got a bunch of fans um right you know yeah. let's keep it all safe for everybody so exactly you know reserve yeah, reservation only so right. you know, right. no one who just shows up can get a spot. Right, and you can't stand around and all of that stuff. So tell me again, where is this on Sunday? This is at Pearl Moon Woodstock, and that's at 52 Mill Hill Road in Woodstock, New York. Perfect. Lindsay Webster will be performing there, and you can just call Pearl Moon and make a reservation and check out. No? No? You Oh, you have to go to pearlmoonwoodstock.com. Oh, okay. So online yeah, reservation. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's all going through online right now. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, good. That's important. Okay, so Lindsay Webster Sunday, which is, of course, Valentine's Day. Two seatings, five and seven. Seven might be sold out, but you can always try and see what's available online. Pearl Moon Woodstock. Perfect, perfect. And, of course, lindsaywebstermusic.com. We want to keep getting that out there so people can follow you and keep up with this amazing career that just is on pause just for a little while, just for a little while. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lindsay, well, it's such a delight to hear you, and I'm glad you're doing well and, you know, kind of figuring out things the way they are right now. But um, yeah, I have yeah. no doubt you'll be back stronger than ever. Look forward to your new music and, um, you know, yeah, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing it, Lindsay, and it's really great to see your success and your travels. Is there a place where that you're really looking forward to getting back to or going to for the first time as far as either a venue or a festival? Um, well, yeah, I'm, well, I'm excited to make it back to Europe. Um, I would like to go back and, and play, um, you know, with like the, the Pizza Express or these little gigs that you do. And like, I used to like, whenever we would book them, I, like, it's a love-hate relationship because it's like, it's a little spot, and it's, like, never really the best sound or anything, but, like, now I'm, like, oh, what I would do to do a Pizza <laughs> Express gig, you know? Yeah, right, right, uh, right, but right. honestly, I'm really excited to be playing at Pearl Moon, because it's my hometown. It's a brand new venue. We're going to be the first people playing there. Um, but, like, when life opens up, yeah, I'm excited to get back on festivals, seeing people, just, you know, the whole, the whole grind of traveling you know travel is such the travel is the work you know the, the, the performance is what you love to do you know for me it's like the 3 a.m lobby calls are really the 
working, so I'm just, I, I love working now. So I'm excited to get back on the grind and keep it going. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you will be, you will be, it's coming, it's happening. And uh, in the meantime, just stay safe and enjoy the music. And uh, Lindsay, I thank you so much for your time today. And um, yeah, I'm very happy that you're doing well and, and look forward to the rest of your career coming up. And when you get your new album out, let's talk again. All right, that sounds perfect. All right, Lindsay, you stay safe. Thank you for your time, and uh, we'll continue this with playing some of your music. Thank you. You're welcome, Lindsay. Take care. Stay safe. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
take me to a place where I can feel so good inside, baby. You are so much more than I can take. Feels like every moment gone is way too long. I can't wait to get close to you, and baby, I can't see.
WVKR Independent Radio Poughkeepsie. That was a trifecta of beautiful music by Lindsay Webster. We just heard Feels Like Forever prior to that, Close to You, and we also heard Only You. 
all by Lindsay Webster. Thank you, Lindsay, for being my guest during the four o'clock hour today. And you can keep up with her travels and her exciting adventures once, you know, she's able to travel again at lindsaywebstermusic.com. Also, she'll be performing this Sunday, also Valentine's Day, along with Will Bryant at Pearl Moon in Woodstock. It's a new restaurant. They're also going to be having some incidental live music there. And you would need to make a reservation to be able to go see Lindsay. You can't just show up. And you can make reservations online at pearlmoonwoodstock.com. So, Thank you to Lindsay. It is 457. I am your host, Rita Ryan, here with Local Motion on 91.3 WVKR, here each and every Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m., playing music of the Hudson Valley musicians that live here and those coming to perform here. And speaking of which, I've been playing a lot of this um uh, released by Larry and Teresa titled It Was the Music because they have this wonderful 10 episode film series out about them and it's doing super well and there's 15 tracks on this soundtrack that I cannot get enough of so trying to play a couple of different ones every single time I'm on so Let's start off, and I'll tell you what's happening. I'm going to play two songs, tell you what's going on at the Bardavon tonight online on their YouTube channel, something you will not want to miss. It's going to be a good one. Let's start off right now, taking a listen to Larry and Teresa, 91.3. Street. 
913 WVKR Annie Lennox waiting in vain. I love that track of hers. And we also heard Larry and Teresa from It Was the music, and we heard the track called For What It's Worth. Of course, that's written by um, Stephen Stills. And uh, that was with Buddy Miller, also with Patty Griffin on vocal, and the Midnight Ramble Band recorded at Levon Helm Studios in Woodstock on August 5th, 2016. Larry and Teresa have a film out. It's available on Amazon and also fans.live. It's called It Was the Music, and it's uh, 10 episodes, and it's absolutely stunning. And I highly recommend anybody uh, to, to watch it. It shows their their love, their families, just touring, their process in the recording studio. And it's it's a very intimate, very detailed um, um biography, I guess, you know, so it's called It Was the Music and this wonderful 15 track soundtrack also available, LarryTeresa.com. And the reason I played Annie Lennox and Larry and Teresa is because tonight something really cool is happening at the Bardavon's YouTube channel. They are doing um, at 8 p.m. a free online series of albums revisited. Tonight they are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the release of Carol King's legendary Tapestry album. And it's curated uh, with commentary by Stephen Lamarca and executive director Chris Silva and others as well. So Annie Lennox is a special guest tonight, along with Carly Simon. And Carly Simon will be performing with Teresa Williams, You've Got a Friend. So hence, I played these ladies that you just heard tonight. A lot of great performers will be performing tonight. Kat Quinn, Dar Williams, Jonathan Brooke, Jill Sobule, Patty Rothberg, Cindy Cashdollar, and the Texas Guitar Women. 
Also, Carly Simon with Teresa Williams, Katie Karen, Laura Stevenson, Lara Hope, and Kate Pearson. All-star lineup. Amazing, incredible female artist tonight. All you have to do is go to YouTube. Bardavon Presents. It's their YouTube channel. You might want to subscribe to it. And this is a free online performance tonight starting at 8 p.m. Info at YouTube, also at bardavon.org. Great, great lineup. I'm looking forward to catching some of that myself. So we'll keep the music flowing. <coughs> this gentleman that I'm playing next will be performing a live stream concert at Bearsville Theater coming up on February 18th. Let's take a listen right now to Mr. Scott Sherrard on 91.3 WVKR Independent Radio Poughkeepsie.
913 WVKR Independent Radio. It's 517 p.m. and we just heard Catskill Dogs. Dog knows it's enough. It's uh, featuring, of course, Kurt Henry on guitar and vocals, Alan Groth on bass guitar, Cheryl Lambert, vocals, percussion, harmonica, and Eric Parker on drums and percussion, along with a guest array of amazing guests of really fabulous amount of guests on here. Um, on this particular track, it also features Harvey Kaiser on tenor sax. So, and Larry Packer on violin and um, David Sanchez on him and organ. So it, it's really a great album. Kurt Henry.com. Kurt is also involved with save the mountain album which is turning 40 just want to tell you a little bit about this over 40 years ago the battle to save minnewaska was raging in new york's hudson valley while songs of protest filled the mountains most every weekend it was to become one of the longest running environmental battles in american history and a success that preserved minnewaska for all time the Minnewaska Preserve is now a New York State Park, and the Greater Shawangunk Preserve is currently under the stewardship of the Friends of the Shawangunks and growing all the time for us to enjoy anytime we please. Now you can savor the 40th anniversary digital release of Save the Mountain, free and accessible 
to all who love her and hike the trails. You can watch for news on an official 40th virtual anniversary celebration, which will be happening on April 5th. Check it out. Save the Mountain. And that album is on YouTube. You can check that. And I believe there's also a Facebook page for this called Save the Mountain. So, Kurt Henry, thanks for sending that my way. Look forward to it and uh, see if we can get you on the on the air before April 5th and talk about that a little bit more. One of our Hudson Valley treasures, right? <clears throat> we also heard Scott Sherrard, his latest Saving Grace. We heard High Cost of Loving You. Scott Sherrard will be performing a live stream concert at the beautiful newly renovated Bearsville Theater in Woodstock, February 18th. You can purchase tickets at bearsvilletheater.com. Scott Gerard is just, uh, oh gosh, I don't know. There's no adjectives to describe him, but he is someone not to be missed. You want to check him out online, scottgerard.com. He was the um, music director and lead guitarist for Greg Allman for about a decade, and he is now part of Little Feet. So good stuff happening. And again, his concert at Bearsville is next week, February 18th, bearsvilletheater.com. And let's see. Yeah, it's 520. Let's keep the music flowing here. We've got another 40 minutes of Hudson Valley music to treat you guys to. And this is certainly be a treat for you. Let's take a listen now to The Restless Age, 91.3. 945. All right. Staying uncertain, I'm closing the curtain, retreating, yet I don't. Why my insides refraining? Cause times have been straining, I'm stumbling to get by and by. I'm aware of surroundings, you feel like a foundling who's worth more dead than alive. What can you do when you need? survive 